This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In the previous uh, two chapters, we've been looking at the consolidated statement uh, financial position. But uh, when one company controls another company, we're also required to produce a consolidated statement of profit or loss. Uh, and in a similar sort of way to the statement of financial position, uh, we do show the total uh, profits of the group as a whole, but then we are required to show how much of that profit uh, belongs to the non-controlling interest, how much of it belongs to um, the shareholders in the parent company. So I'll explain uh, what I mean and um, uh, the various problems that can be by means of examples. So can you have a look at example one, please, first of all? P acquired 80% of the share capital of S on that company's incorporation in 2008. Um, the respective statements of profit or loss of the two companies for the year ended December 2009 are as follows. Now, as always, remember there are two separate companies. They both produce their statements of profit or loss, and it's uh, quite normal, revenue, cost of sales, gross profit expenses, profit before tax, tax, profit for the year. Uh, and underneath, the movement on the retained earnings. And they're incorporated in 2008, and we are now December 2009. So for 2009, the retained earnings brought forward 18p, 20 in S, add on the profit for the year, and we've got the uh, retained earnings carried forward. All right, let's have a go. Let's do the consolidated statement of profit or loss. And essentially, we just add up the total revenue for the group. 52 in one, 24 in the other, so a total of uh, 76,000. Uh, the total cost of sales. Add up. 12 plus 10 is 22,000. And so the gross profit, 76 minus 22, 54. Uh, the expenses add up, so the total expenses for the group, 12,000. The profit before tax, Uh, 42, the tax, add up, 12 plus 3 is 15, and so the profit for the year, fifty-seven thousand. oh sorry, I'm going the wrong way, 42 minus 15, uh, 27,000. So although uh, there are some problems coming in the later examples, uh, that really can't be easier. It's just uh, adding up the two statements. However, that's the profit for the group as a whole. Uh, we are required to show how much of that profit belongs to the shareholders of the parent company and how much of that profit belongs to the non-controlling interest. And so below we say attributable to uh, shareholders of P and non-controlling interest. Uh, now, the way I'm going to approach this may look a rather strange, but this is the way we do it. And it's because of um, one or two little problems that can come in later examples. The total profit is 27,000. Uh, the amount attributable to the non-controlling interest. Well, note at the top, P uh, owns 80%, so the non-controlling interest own 20% and their uh, share of this year's profit is simply 
20% of S's profit for the year. S made 7,000 profit, which is included in the total for the group. Uh, the non-controlling interest on 20% of that, which is 1,400. Uh, the rest of any profit belongs to the shareholders of P. which is 25,600. Now, uh, you can work that out separately. I mean, it's obviously P's profit plus <coughs> their share of S's. However, the way we do it always is that's effectively just a balancing figure. Total profit is, for this year is 27. 1,400 of it belongs to the non-controlling interest. The rest of it is attributable to the group. Uh, note all, also, uh, this won't always be asked, but it is here. It says, prepare the consolidated statement of profit and loss, which I've done, and the movement on retained earnings for the P group. And so, the movement on retained earnings... All we've dealt with is this year's profit. Uh, the current year, 2009. Uh, for the moment, movement on retained earnings, uh, we want to show effectively the retained earnings as they appear in the statement of financial position. And so the brought forward figure How would we have shown it in last year's statement of financial position? We'd have taken all of um, P's, 80,000, plus P's share of post-acquisition uh, earnings in S. Well, this company, uh, um, P acquired the shares on the incorporation of S, so all the retained earnings are post-acquisition. And so, P share of S's post acquisition profits 80% of 20,000 is what? 16. So all of um, P's 80 plus 16 from S, 96,000. Add on the group's profit for the year. Well, remember, we're showing the movement on retained earnings for the group as a whole. And the profit for this year is the retained earnings figure in the stem to financial position we're after. Uh, and it, therefore, uh, attributable to the shareholders of P is 25,600. Uh, giving retained earnings carried forward of 600, one, uh, And that is exactly the same as we were doing for the uh, statement of financial position. How did we work out uh, the retained earnings? Uh, we took all of the um, P's plus P's share uh, of S's post acquisition. All right, let's look at one more example uh, on the next page. Let's make it slightly more interesting. Example two, P acquired 60% of S on 1st of January 2008, at which date the, returned, the retained earnings were 8,000. The respective statements of profit or loss of the two companies for the year in December 2010 are as follows. So just like before, obviously different figures. Uh, and at the bottom, the movement on retained earnings. Well, let's have a go. The consolidated statement. First of all, revenue. Well, all the way down, we simply add up. So 85 and 31, 116,000. Uh, cost of sales. 
add up, uh, 21 and 12 is 33,000. And so the gross profit, uh, 83,000. Expenses, 12 plus 7, 19,000. And so the profit before tax, 264,000. The tax, 16 plus 4 is 20. And therefore, the final profit, 44,000. Easy, just like last time. The consolidated statement of profit or loss, we've just added everything together. Uh, what about um, these two little bits below? We have to show who that is attributable to. How much of that profit belongs to shareholders of the parent company? Uh, how much belongs to the non-controlling interest? And as I said uh, when we went through the last lecture, sorry, the last example, uh, I should always do the non-controlling interest first. Uh, this time, back to the first line, P owns 60%, so the non-controlling interest owns 40%. And so just give them 40% of S's profit. For this year, 3,200. The rest of this year's profit, the balancing figure, belongs to the shareholders of P. So 44,000 minus 3,200 at 40,800. The balancing figure. Well, that's fine. That's just this year's profit. Uh, we're also, though, required to show the movement of retained earnings. And again, what we want is the retained earnings figure for the statement of financial position. So we spent enough time on statement of financial position. But do be clear, it's exactly the same approach, the same workings. Uh, first of all, the retained earnings brought forward. Imagine we were doing a statement of financial position at the end of last year, the start of this year. Because what do we do? It's all of uh, P's, 120,000. Plus P's share of S's post acquisition profits. Well, P's share is 60%. Uh, what are the post acquisition earnings, uh, retained earnings of S? Well, at the start of the year, the retained earnings were 17,000. But at the date of acquisition, First line, the return in, uh, retained earnings of S were 8,000. And so it's the remaining 9,000 that were post acquisition. So, uh, post acquisition, 9,000. 60% of that, 5,400. Add that to the brought forward figure. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, the two P's retained earnings, 125,400. So that's the brought forward retained earnings from the step to financial position. Uh, add on the profit for the year. Well, the amount attributable to uh, the shares of P is 40,800. And therefore, the carried forward retained earnings. The figure that would appear in the statement of financial position is 166,200. I think I've got my arithmetic right. Okay, 
there's only one remaining problem, uh, which is something you'll remember, of course, as a slight problem in the statement of financial position, and that's inter-entity trading. So I'll go through one more example, but we will have a break. I'll stop this lecture here, but the next lecture, I'll bring it into entity trading, and then we'll have everything that you, you need for the statement of profit and loss.